pray, the Lord, whenever, whenever I am saying something, even in prayer also, even in prayer also, you know, when, when we are doing a prayer meeting or in, in our prayer also, sometimes in prayer, when we are praying the word, we are not minding, okay, what, what, what is the word that we are using. Okay? Sometimes we pray, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, I am submitting myself, I am submitting myself, Oh Lord, I am submitting, I mean, all my body, and I am giving myself in the mighty hand of God. Everything that we, we just, I mean, speak out all those words. But I don't know how much we are submitting ourselves. In, in songs, right? When we are singing songs, you know, one pastor was saying, you know, the, the believers, they are, I mean, they are uh, uh, um, saying lies more than uh, the other time when they are singing the songs. Okay? You know, we are lying when we are singing the songs more, more than the, the other occasions. You know, sometimes we say that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm lying or I'm, I'm saying a lie. But at the same time, when we are singing a song, there are many things in song. And we are simply singing that song. Okay? We are singing, I mean, simply singing that song and saying, okay, oh Lord, I will be I mean, doing this and I will be doing I mean, like this and this is my concept and this is my belief and this is my faith and Lord. And we are saying, saying, saying all those things and we are not doing that. Okay? Malarathal Uru Patan Dallo Logam Venda Yenike, Unum Venda, Ende, Sorgatile Kandane, Kandal Madi and the Kamal Pada Randale. Okay, I don't want anything from this world, oh Lord, I don't want anything from this world. Okay, about part of Adam Padana Vishwasil and the other. Code the Lingalam Parain then. Hm? Prati Kimberola, Sam Sari Kimberola, Kalam Code the Parain Epera, part of Adam Padana. So, what all the things, all the things are written in the, in the song, no? So, we have to sing that song, but we are not. Doing that, okay? Okay, I don't want the world or I don't want the worldly pleasures. Singing, 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 singing. After all, singing, we are not having a look on that and we are just, I mean, doing everything opposite to that song. So that's the reason that pastor said we are more time, we are lying in the presence of God when we are singing that song. Often, we doesn't know what would be the consequences of our words sometimes. Amen? So, Think about, there are many advantages and disadvantages of our words. Okay, so when we are using words, or when we are speaking something, or when we are speaking to another person, think about what is the consequence of that. What would be the consequence of that? That means, you know, Bible says that, think twice when you speak a word. Okay, think twice before when you speak a word. So, you know, the, the, the praying people always will not talk much, but they will be sitting in the presence of God, listening from the Lord, listening from the pastors, listening from the elders, and they are listening the word of God, and they are keeping quiet, and when they need it, they will just utter it. Okay? Otherwise, the, the things, what, what, what is happening in all the churches in, I mean, in these days, you know, the people are talking much. They are not listening. You know, the people are not listening to the word of God. The people are not listening towards God to listen the voice of God. They don't want to listen the voice of God. They want to listen all the worldly voices. I mean, they want to listen all the I mean, worldly things and they want to be engaged with all the worldly things. And they are engaged with that and they are enjoying in all the worldly things. They are not ready to listen to the voice of God. They are not ready to listen to the word of God. So that's the reason that there are many, many, many problems are happening. There are many troubles are happening. So that's the reason we know that, you know, there are many advantages with our words and with our mouth. And there are many disadvantages that we can bring into the people. So let us think about what are the advantages of the guarded mouth. Okay, The advantages of the guarded mic, uh, uh, mouth. And there are many Bible verses there. I don't believe that I'll be able to read all the verses. But it is, it is very clearly written uh, on, the, on, the, on the slide. You can get it from there. No, just I'll be reading all those portions and I'll be moving on. Because uh, otherwise, uh, we won't be able to make it today. Okay, so, no, advantages of the mouth, or I'm just talking about the positive effect of our mouth, the positive effect of our, 
I mean, our, I mean, lips or our tongue or our mouth, okay, or our words, okay. You know, how can we use our mouth, how can we use our tongue for a positive effect? To get the positive effect, you know, negative effect is there and positive effect is there. I mean, advantages are there and disadvantages are there. So when we use our words and when we speak something to other people, you know, think about what is coming out of my mouth. The first advantage is, advantage is Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4. I mean, in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4, it says that our words can bring health and healing. Our words can bring health and healing. That means the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. That means healing can come from our mouth. And health can come from our mouth. That's the meaning of that verse. Okay? Our words can bring health and healing to the people. You know, there are many people physically ill. The physically, they are so weak. And there are many people going through the sickness in their life and struggling with the sickness. You know, when you are going to meet a person, you know, there are some people uh, going to meet a, per, uh, meet, a, meet a sick person. And, uh, you know, the other day, one pastor was saying that, okay, one believer uh, visited another believer to, um, to, to pray for that believer because that brother was not feeling well. So he went there and he prayed for that brother. And all of a sudden, uh, this brother in, in that house, he was, uh, I mean, explaining all those things that, okay, uh, this is my problem and this is my sickness and all those things. Then this believer, this brother was saying, yeah, oh, brother, you know, last last day or last year, um, uh, somebody died only because of this sickness. Okay? He said, you know, this disease is coming, sister. Hello, brother. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay? You know, if he is saying that, okay, oh, brother, when somebody died because of the same sickness last year, then this person will be disappointed and he will think, okay, I am also going to die. I am also going to die. So, you know, when we speak something or when we, I mean, when some words are coming from our mouth, the Bible very clearly says that let that word bring healing into the lives of the people. Let that word bring health into the people of God because it is very clearly written, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. The tongue that bringing healing to the people, health to the people is a, is a tree of life or source of life to the broken hearted. Dear friends, dear brothers and sisters, there are many people those who are broken. There are many broken hearted people and let our word bring healing and health all to all those people. And here in this particular verse, the tongue is considered as a medicine. The tongue is considered as a medicine. You know, your tongue, your word is a medicine. You know, when you talk to a person, when you talk to a person, when you talk to a person who is I mean, very weak, maybe he may be having many struggles, he may be having many, I mean, weakest situation, and maybe illness. But when you speak to that person, that will become like a medicine, and that person will get cured, and that person will be healed completely because of your word. That's the meaning of that word. And also, the next verse is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21. It says that the lips of a righteous feed many people. The lips of a righteous can feed many people. You know, we are supposed to feed the people. We are sup supposed to, I mean, I mean, and nourish the people. You know, it's, it's a food. The word of a righteous person is a food for other people. Now, there are many people starving. There are many people going through the strugglesome situation. There are many people struggling with many things, lack of many things. You know, when they are going through that situation, speak to those person. When you are talking something to that person, let that word bring as a, as a, as a food for that person. That's the reason it says that it can nourish others and feed others. And tongue is considered as a healthy health giving food okay our tongue our word is a health giving food 
And also, in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24, I told you that I'll be reading all these portions because it is very clear, it is very, very clearly, I mean, I mean, understood there, I mean, without any explanation. Okay, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24, it says that, The pleasant words are like a honeycomb, and sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. The, the words are there, verses are written there. Okay, 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 very, very clear. So, pleasant words are like a honeycomb and it is sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. That means, again, the tongue is considered as a medicine. Again, the word or the tongue is considered as a medicine because it's a honeycomb. What is the speciality of the honeycomb? It brings sweetness to the to the people. It brings sweetness to the people, you know. My dear brothers and sisters and children, hallelujah, listen here, listen here. Uh, the, the, the children, those who are sitting there, uh, Jonathan and Nathan, listen here, listen here. I'm speaking, don't speak anything. Okay, so just to make careful, I mean, listen to that words. Okay, so you know, when we speak something, when we, I mean, do something, let that word and let that action of ours bring the peace into the hearts of the people. No? It, is, it, is, it should be very sweet. Our words must be sweet. And it should bring, you know, it says that just like a honeycomb and sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. The bones means the inner organs, okay? And the, 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 the soul is a spiritual organ that God has given us. You know, when we speak something, when we, I mean, speak to some people, you know, that, that word will bring the healing to the people just like a medicine, okay, to the soul, you know, there are many people spiritually, I mean, I mean, what is that, uh, spiritually very weak. There will be some people in our church also. There are some people, I mean, they are spiritually very weak. But when we speak to those people, I mean, engrace them, engrace them, build them up, I mean, bring them up. I mean, I mean, engrace them with the word of God. I mean, talk to them very sweetly and just like a honeycomb, let a word bring the sweetness to those person, person and that person also, let him also come to, come to the, I mean, I mean, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So let him also, I mean, come to the church in the coming days. I mean, so that is what, uh, I mean, we read uh, in this particular, I mean, verse. And again, in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, it says that the tongue of a wise man brings healing. Okay, again, the tongue is considered as a medicine. You know, in Bible, you know, when uh, the, uh, the, the authors of the Bible, they are uh, picking some of the organs or some of the parts of the body, they wanted to, I mean, tell us that, you know, when God has given something for us in our in our physical body, and there is there is a purpose behind it. There is a purpose behind it. Okay. So when God has given us a mouth, when God has given us a tongue, I mean God is I mean saying that okay, I have a I have a special purpose behind it. And you have to use that organ for the glory of God, for the edification of other people. So here we understand the tongue of a wise person brings healing. So when we speak something wisely, you know, that will bring healing for the people. You know, there are, there are many people in our church also, I mean, uh, calling me and saying, Pastor, this is my problem and pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. You know, I used to say, tell them that, okay, I will pray for you, no problem. The church is praying for you, I am praying for you, no worries, no worries, God will do the miracles and God will heal you, God will, I mean, bring the solution for that problem. Now, that is the only one thing that we can say with our mouth. We cannot say, no, 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 God is not going to do anything for you because you are doing that, you are doing this. God will not do anything. God will not heal you. God will not uh, do the miracle in your life because you are doing that. No, I cannot say that. The word, the mouth which God has given me, the tongue which God has given me is to be used for the for the for the I mean edification of the people and when I speak that word when I when I talk to a person I mostly try to speak in this way wisely because understanding their problem understanding their situation we have to speak very wisely that's the reason I mean in Bible itself it is very clearly written that a, a word of a tongue of a wise person will bring healing to the other people. Again, that I mean, tongue is considered as a medicine there. In, 
In New Testament, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, we've read that verse only. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, you know, Apostle Paul is uh, considering the biblical doctrine as a, as a healthy doctrine, healthy food. Okay, read that verse. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. The sexual immoral, immoral, immoral men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. Okay, what is the word which is written there? Sound doctrine, right? Sound doctrine. Doctrine. Okay, so that sound doctrine which is mentioned there, Apostle Paul is considering that sound doctrine as a healthy doctrine. Okay, in Malayalam it is written, Pathya Vajanam. Le, Pathya Vajanam. What is the meaning of Pathya Vajanam? It's a healthy food. It's a healthy food. You know, when, when we, when we uh, 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 pray for our children, we used to pray that, Oh Lord, I mean, help us, oh God, or help their parents, uh, oh Lord, to, to, to bring them, uh, that chil to bring their children in, a, in, in, the, in the sound doctrine of the word of God. That means, you know, when we are giving the sound doctrine, when we are, I mean, teaching them the, 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 the sound doctrines of the word of God, that should be the healthy food for our children, the spiritual health. Okay, the sound doctrine can bring the spiritual health as a, as, a, as, a, as a medicine or as a healthy food for all the people or for the children. You know, we have to give them that healthy food. I mean, we are interested to give uh, all the, I mean, boost or horlicks or the other other items, you know, every day, every day. You know, but think about how much they are grown in spiritual life. How much they are grown in spiritual life. Are you feeding them with the word of God? Are you feeding them the word of the, uh, it, it's, it's a sound doctrine, right? You know, the sound doctrine which is mentioned there, it can nourish the believer's spiritual life. It can nourish the spiritual life of the believers. And the sound doctrine comes from our mouth, can help the people to grow spiritually also. You know, the sound doctrine or the word of God which comes from our mouth, it's not, it should not be a pastor or some elders or the responsible people. You know, even a person or a, a child is coming from and he is speaking a word Remember that that is the word of God. That is not the word of a person. That is not the word of an author. That is not the word of a, of, of a child that's speaking that. But that person is speaking the word of God. So the word of God can change many people. The word of God, when it comes into the heart of a person, that can make many changes in his life and that can build up that person. That's the reason it is certain that in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, Paul says that I'm considering the biblical doctrine as a healthy doctrine. And Patya Upadeshamaita Nyadina Kanakakuno in the Parayanula Karnavadana. Again, when you study about Jesus, okay, the words of Jesus, you know, always when Jesus was doing his public ministry in this world, when the words of Jesus was, you know, when when the, when the people heard that, we read in Luke chapter 4, verse 22, that people when they when they heard the words of Jesus, they were wondered at the gracious and sweet words which proceeded out of his mouth. No? Luke says, you know, when Jesus was speaking, when Jesus was preaching, when Jesus was talking to the people, we know that many in many incidents, the people were coming to Jesus Christ and the disciples were saying, no, 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 don't go to Jesus now because he is so busy. Then Jesus said, no, 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 no. Leave them, leave them, leave them to me because I'm here to pray for them. I'm here to bless them. You know, the disciples of Jesus said, no, no, they were hindering. And they, they were saying, no, you don't go there now because Jesus is very busy. But Jesus said, I'm busy, but I'm living for these people only. I'm living for these people only. I'm not busy. No, I can do that. I can bless them. I can pray for them. When you bring them all into me and I will bless them. I mean, so that was the, that was the, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the real idea of Jesus Christ. And he was saying all the words with a grace. His words were with grace and sweet words. And many people gathered around him to listen the word of God. Only because Jesus was speaking 
the gracious words. Amen. Jesus was speaking the sweet words in his public ministry. Hallelujah. So, amen. I pray that may let all our words can bring health and healing in the life of the broken hearted people. There are many broken hearted people, I mean, in the midst of us. And uh, there are many broken hearted, maybe outside. Let us, I mean, speak to those people and let's bring them also into Christ and saving not the Jesus Christ and they also will be built up. I mean, we are not supposed to I mean, break down a person. We are not supposed to put down a person. We are not supposed to, I mean, destroy a person's life, but we are supposed to, I mean, bring up the people. We are supposed to build up the people with our words which should be the sweeter words amen and the next advantage or next i mean uh, positive effect uh, of uh, our tongue or our mouth is uh, uh, written in proverbs chapter 14 verse 25 yes proverbs chapter 14 verse 25 can you read that verse maybe <clears throat> okay so uh, you know, all of a sudden, when we when we read that uh, verse, we will be going to different different dimensions. But we are bringing back that thoughts into our title. That our title is our title is title of this sermon is uh huh. What is the title of our sermon today? What was the title of uh, last week? Okay. <laughs> angry with me when I'm speaking the, all these things? It's, it's not my words, okay? It's, it's written in Bible. Okay, Bible is Okay, so, uh, and then uh, what, what was the last week? Sermon. A mouth, an awesome gift of God. And today? Guarded and unguarded mouth of a believer, of a believer. Very simple. Okay, so in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 25, the main thing is our words can rescue the perishing people. Our words can rescue the perishing people. Okay, how can we do that? You know, it, it says a true witness saves the lives, right? A true witness saves the lives. That means we are supposed to use our words to win and save the souls. No, there are many perishing souls around us. There are many perishing souls around us. But our responsibility is to speak to those people with an intention of rescuing the perishable people. You know, we are trying to reach the unreached people. Why? Why? We are reaching the unreached people and we are reaching the unbelievers and talking to them. And we are bringing many unbelieving families to our house and giving some food for them or lunch or dinner and talking to them. Why we are doing that? Our intention is not anything else, but it is only to bring those people into Christ, right? That is the intention of our, life, of our heart. You know, bringing those people, the perishing people, you know, it is, it is, a, it is, a, it is a privilege that we could I mean, become the children of God. We could become the children of God. We are the children of God and we are praising God and we are worshiping God every time. And we are saying glory, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Lord has I mean, saved me. I mean, my soul is saved now and I will go to heaven. Jumping and dancing and singing and so, uh, saying that again, I am safe, I am safe, I am safe. I will be in heaven. Think about the other people. Think about the unreached people. Think about the perishing people. No, we have the responsibility to reach out those people also and bringing them also to the church. Amen? So that's the reason it says that a true witness saves the lives. The true witness concerning gospelization should be very clear. You know? When we speak the word of gospel to the other people, it should be true witness. True witness means, you know, when Jesus was appointing the, the disciples in, uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says that, you know, you will be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and in all, all the, the uttermost part of the world. You know, when Jesus was saying that, Jesus said, you will be my witness, right? Jesus said, you will be my witness. 
നിങ്ങൾ എൻ്റെ സാക്ഷികളായിട്ട് പോകാനാണ് പറഞ്ഞത് സോ മൈ വിറ്റ്നെസ്സസ് മസ്റ്റ് ബി ട്രൂ വിറ്റ്നെസ്സസ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ സെയിം വേർഡ് സെയ്സ് ദാറ്റ് യു നോ വെൻ എ ട്രൂ വിറ്റ്നെസ് ഇസ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് സംതിങ് ഫ്രം എ ട്രൂ ഹാർട്ട് ദ ഗാസ്പൽ or about jesus christ when we speak when we share the gospel it must must come from a heart okay thinking about oh there are many perishing people there are many perishing people oh lord i need to bring them more so lord i mean when i am speaking to those people or when we see the perishing people just pray for them also pray for them also you know when you when you go outside when you're driving you can see many people perishing no when the, the people those who are i mean not knowing about jesus and his love the people those who are perishing day by day no let's just pray for them and also when you speak to those people well let it be in our intention in our heart the lord lord let them also come to christ the perishing people let them also come to christ amen and many are perishing and let us also bring all of these people into christ and even you know in the old testament when you read exodus and deuteronomy you will understand that the false witness was forbidden in the bible and it was punishable in the court false witness kallasaachi like kallasaachi which is which is the ninth commandment of uh, uh, out of the 10 commandments do not thank you george do not bear false witness okay the kallasaachi parayirudhu nalladana end ombadamatha commandment alle kalpana so that means you know we are not supposed to say any false witness right okay we are supposed to say only the true witness we are the true witnesses of jesus christ amen so we are sharing the true witness and i mean let us lead many i mean lost people and perishing people from the i mean eternal punishment to the eternal life so our motive is not to bring any people i mean into our church or into our organization but we are bringing people to the eternal life okay I mean by the way our church name is eternal life church of god say so our motive is to bring the people into the eternal life because they are perishing and they are in eternal judgment and they are in eternal punishment we have to bring all those people into the eternal i mean i mean uh, uh, life okay now we will go to the next advantage of our mouth I and mean, i'll be i'll be i mean going little speedily because uh, i want to finish this uh, i mean topic today itself you know in 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 proverbs chapter 12 verse 25 in proverbs chapter 12 verse 25 uh, we read that our words can encourage those who are overburdened our words can encourage those who are overburdened okay so uh, uh, especially that says that anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression but a good word makes it glad okay so when the word is coming from our mouth that should not cause a depression for any person but that good word will make it glad okay so when we speak something let happiness comes to the people let gladness come to the people that is the meaning of that that means you know our words can encourage those who are burdened there are many overburdened people there are many broken people there are many broken hearted people you know can we encourage those people encourage the word of encouragement you know in uh, in acts chapter 4 verse 36 and 37 we read about barnabas okay barnabas who was barnabas barnabas is known as the son of encouragement hmm? the son of encouragement is the son of comfort the son of consolation okay so barnabas the speciality of barnabas whenever he was speaking or whenever he was doing something he's in his mind he was thinking okay i should encourage one person i should i'm um, counsel a person i should comfort a person because the people are restless and the people are going through the struggles and situation the people are peaceless so we have to bring the peace into their house i mean we have to bring the encouraging words into those people and jesus is the best example for the encouragement you know when uh, we read luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 jesus said the spirit and anointing of the lord is upon me to do many things so jesus had the anointing jesus had the spirit of encouraging other people okay the same spirit must have in our lives also you know jesus had the spirit of encouragement just like brother bas Jesus was a person who was encouraging other people he had the anointing 
He had the spirit of encouraging other people to do many things. To preach the gospel to the poor. To preach the gospel to the poor. To proclaim release to the captives. To give sight to the blind people. To set free those who are oppressed. Amen. So Jesus had the anointing. Jesus had the spirit of encouraging others. I mean, setting free the oppressed ones and I mean, giving lives to the blind people and proclaiming releases to the captive people and preaching gospel to the poor people, unreached people. Amen. So the same spirit is upon us. Hallelujah. This morning, let us also take that responsibility and say, Oh Lord, I'm ready to do that. Amen. Let my words bring, bring glory unto the name of the Lord. And also let my I mean, word bring I mean, peace and the rest to the people in the coming days. Hallelujah. So remember, we are not to discourage, but we are supposed to encourage the people. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when, when we are th I mean, studying about the encouragement, uh, let me let me uh, remind you one thing from uh, maybe uh, uh, Numbers chapter 13 and 14. You know, two chapters which speaks about uh, uh, the, the Moses that sending the spies to I mean, spy out of the land of Canaan. Okay, so our words must be encouraging words and when we speak something, it should bring encouragement, it should bring edification, it should bring, uh, it should build up the people. Okay, so when, when, when I mean, Moses was sending 12 uh, men for, I mean, spying out the land of Canaan, we know that when all of them went and they did their duty in 40 days. Okay. For 40 days, they were just searching all this land and they were I mean, uh, finding out many things. And at last they came back to Moses and said something that the 10 out of the 12, they said, no, we cannot capture that land. But they said, they, you know, it is very clearly written that they were saying the bad or what is that? Bad words, right? The bad words about the, the people, those who were li living in Canaan. The bad words means what? Okay, eh? they were they were saying the negative report. The negative report. They they they, they were I mean, saying negative report about the Canaan and the people of Canaan. And they said, no no no, we cannot capture that place because all the people those who are staying there they are bigger than us and they are stronger than us and we cannot I mean capture that place. But at the same time, only two people, only two men. Okay, who are those? Caleb and Joshua, both of them, they said, no, 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 we can. We can. We can do that. We can conquer that land because the Almighty God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, how many of you believe that? I mean, with that, I mean, only minority people, only two people, they said, no, we can do that. And encouraging other people. They are encouraging other people to do for a, for a good cause. Hallelujah. So this morning also, I mean, the word of God is encouraging every one of us to make that decision. Oh Lord, I mean, let my words bring many people into Christ. Let, 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 let my words encourage other people, oh God. Just like uh, that two men, Caleb and Joshua. They were encouraging the people and saying, no, 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 we can do that. We can do that. The presence of God is with us. When God is with us, Almighty God is with us. And that is enough for us to, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, bring all those people and to capture that place. Hallelujah. So when someone does, I mean, uh, the, the, the beneficial or good things and appreciate the people because they are encouraging other people. Hallelujah. But I mean, you know, let me, let me tell you one more thing. Read out some of, some more things and we will, I mean, fi finish that portion today. You know, same time, we were speaking about the advantages of the, advantages of the 10, right? The advantages of the Ten. The same time there are disadvantages of also. There are same time the negative effect of our tongue also is there. Which are those? I'll read out those things. Man, just reading out. No, no Bible verses are given. Okay, you know that means we are many times misuse our words. We many times misuse our mouth. Okay, sometimes we use our words to destroy other people. Sometimes we use our words to deceive other people. We used to use our words to disappoint other people. We used to use our words to discourage other people. And we may hurt other people by telling lies. We may hurt other people by gossiping. gossiping. We may hurt other people by flattery. Flattery means? Okay? So we may hurt other people by flattering. 
We may hurt other people by speaking in anger. No? It says that angry people puts fuel into the fire. In Proverbs, Proverbs it says that, you know, the angry people puts fuel into the fire. That means, you know, uh, uh, um, you know uh, outwardly we can say that, okay, I'm not anger with anyone, but inwardly some people are anger. No? Uh, outwardly, that, that's called hypocrisy. No? Outwardly, they are so happy and speaking to the people and they are so very friendly. But inwardly, is very, very bad and inwardly, they are angry with that person. It can happen. You know, that will hurt the person. And also, men, uh, our words can hurt others by talking too much. Okay? Our words can, I mean, hurt other people by talking too much. Okay? There are many examples in Bible. I don't have time to go through all those things. And our words may hurt other people by talking instead of working. Okay? Talking instead of working. That means someone said empty barrels makes the most noise. Empty barrels makes the most noise. Amen? So let me read two more verses and conclude my message today. That Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18 says that reckless words pierce like a sword using harsh words. Reckless words will pierce like a sword. No, Bible very clearly says about that. We should, we should mind that. We should think about that. How is my words and how am, am I speaking to other people? You know, reckless words, pierce like a sword using. Or, I mean, in Malayalam it says, Walagunda kuttum pole, murci ai samsari kina virunda, nyani gruda navo, sukha pradava nada varadi kina. Murci oda kuttum pole, I mean, piercing the heart of a person. And again, in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23, it says that whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Men, many a times, when we are not guarding our mouth and we are not able to, I mean, I mean, use our words, I mean, wisely. That's the reason that many a times, uh, I mean, I mean, many people are hurt. And many people are, I mean, struggling. Many people are in problem only because of that. So this morning, I mean, the, the word of God is encouraging every one of us to, I mean, close our eyes in the presence of God and just pray, Oh Lord, I'm committing myself in the mighty hand of God. Oh Lord, I need to take a decision this morning, oh Lord. I need to know what is the usage of my mouth, oh Lord. I need to know what is the importance of my words, oh God. So let us all submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Let our words bring peace and blessing to the other people. Let our words restore the sinners. Let our words increase the brokenhearted. Let our words bring health and healing to those who are wounded. Let our determination be with the right intention and let us use our mouth always to speak spiritual things to glorify the name of the Lord. Let it be our decision this morning. Oh Lord, help me, oh God, to use my mouth, use my tongue to glorify your name. And also, whenever I'm getting chance, oh Lord, help me to talk and speak about the spiritual things, oh Lord. That's the reason David prayed like this. Let us also pray that, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. How many of you can pray that prayer with, uh, I mean, David this morning? Hallelujah. David says that, O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your presence, O oh God, in your sight, O oh God. This morning, let us also pray for that. Let us also just, I mean, pray that, O oh Lord, I need your presence, O oh God. I need your wisdom, O oh Lord. I need your wisdom, O oh God. Hallelujah. Many times, O oh Lord, the, the words which comes out of my mouth, O oh Lord, that may disappoint other people. That may, I mean, discourage other people. That may destroy other people, O oh God. But today, I'm taking a decision, O oh Lord. Keep my, keep my mouth, O oh Lord. I mean, guard my mouth, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Guard my mouth, O oh God, so that I'll be speaking wisely. I'll be talking to the people, I mean, very wisely. That will bring encouragement for the people. That will bring, I mean, edification to the people. That will build up the people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Let us all summit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. And let us pray together. Hallelujah. I request a, a 